Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my monthly shop my stash. But before we get into that, look who got her roots done. I feel like a brand new woman. I added some face framing highlights and some highlights throughout just to bring the colors that are lower up here again, just so it blends a lot nicer. I am really loving it. I love a hair change no matter how subtle it is, it's always fun. But other than that, in today's Shop My Stash, I'm just gonna be using products I already own and love. I'm not gonna incorporate any newer products or anything like that. Just ones I haven't used in a really long time and that I miss and such. So before we get to picking out the products from my drawers, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It would mean so much to me and let's get to it. The weather forecast says that there's going to be thunderstorms arriving pretty soon, which I'm super excited. I love thunderstorms. The lighting is super dark today, <laughs> so I apologize about that. So for my face base, I already have like all my skincare applied and my moisturizer and I don't feel like I really need to apply apply my MAC strobe cream everywhere. I think I'm going to just focus this in the areas I usually highlight or that I want to appear more glowy. The MAC strobe cream is an amazing product. I use the shade Gold Light. I just prefer more golden -y shades. Instead of more pink ones, I always like to look a little bit more warm. I think it complements my skin a lot better as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. Strobe cream also is a little bit more emollient of a texture, so it does make you appear a little bit more glowy in that sense. It doesn't dry down or anything. I'm also gonna take that under the eye. So that's just something I wanna mention, just in case if you are interested in this product but you have an oilier skin type, it's just something I always like to mention just because it can kind of make it look more dewy. So I just apply that under the eyes, kind of where I highlight a little bit on the chin and then I'll feather the rest on my forehead. Strobe cream is really good for the days that you want to look like you have glass skin because look at that glow that it gives, it's beautiful. You can also use it on top of your foundation if you want to use it as a highlight because it is one of the best products to use as a glass glow kind of vibe. So now moving on to foundation, I'm going to be using the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. And I haven't used this in a moment. I think the last time I used this was in like my direct sunlight uh, golden hour look. And a lot of people thought it was a super patchy foundation just because I was using my rainbow film and the green parts of that rainbow film were casting onto my face so it made it look really, really bad but it was just that this foundation is very smooth and I wouldn't wear something that's patchy. I'm just going to apply this with my Royal Lingnickel Complexion Brush, as pretty much always. I'll zoom you guys in a little closer so you can see. So now I'm just going to go over everything with my Beauty Blender, just to pick up that excess and kind of make it more of a skin-like finish. Now I'm going to move into my concealer and I picked out the Glossier Stretch Concealer and I use the shade G9. And I like to first apply this with a brush just because it's a lot easier to get in there I find. I'm using this Sephora Airbrush Concealer Brush. It's just kind of like a smaller domed blending brush and I kind of place it with this in the areas where I want to apply some concealer. I always like to bring it up in this little area too to correct that blueness and the darkness that's in that area. It opens up the eye a lot and it just makes the whole thing look a lot more smooth and brightened and everything good. I'm also gonna bring some on my nose. I'm just going to blend the nose area with the brush first. I'm just going to go over with a sponge. There, that was an unintentional glass glow base for you. Glowing from every angle. Okay, so I'm going to set the under eye with some powder. I am going to go in with some powder later on, I think, but I have some cream products I'm going to be going in with. I'm just gonna take some powder just to set the concealer so it doesn't move or crease around. And I'm using the Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. So to bronze, I picked out my Tower 28 bronzer. I use the shade West Coast, and I'm going to be using my Airbrush Precision Foundation Brush from Sephora, and I'm going to be doing the Wave Technique. I just love how that applies to the face. It's so unexpected when you look at it in like the component. 
Like how beautiful does it look on the skin in that technique? It just looks totally like you stepped off the beach, which I'm so in love with. I'm going to be going into highlighter and I picked out my Marc Jacobs Spotlight Glow Stick. Look at me gravitating to all these crazy glowy things today. So while I highlight, I have a little funny story that absolutely killed me this week. So I have been slowly moving into my place here. And so I found some of the boxes of my things when I was living in Vancouver, like my dishes and some decorative pieces that uh, didn't fit in my room at my parents. And one of those things, <laughs> this might horrify you, so just as a little warning, um, is this life cast of me which doesn't really look like me because we were doing it sitting up so everything's like dragged down these are the products were so heavy but we did this in makeup school so we can like build things on it for my prosthetics class it's a horrifying thing so naturally me and my brother because he's been kind of living here with me throughout quarantine because i have really good wi-fi here my parents live out on an acreage so he's been gaming a lot here so it was just funny that we just started naturally hiding this thing to scare each other. Like we would put it into each other's beds or in the bathroom, just places that would scare you and it was hilarious. So when it was my turn, I had placed it in the microwave, completely forgot about it. And then I got kind of like a move in clean. We have no cases where I live right now. So uh, things are kind of back to normal at the moment. So they were allowed to come and clean. And then I get a text from them because I just went to my parents so they could really get in here. And I'll put up some screenshots of the chat, but basically she took a picture of that thing in the microwave and she said, um, we took this out. I hope it's okay. And I completely died. I thought it was so funny and I scared the crap out of one of them. And I felt so bad because I could only imagine like the thought of me cleaning something, just opening up the freaking microwave and seeing the scary bust of <laughs> your client is horrifying. By the way, now I'm just gonna jump back into powder and kind of set my face in areas, especially in my forehead and the center of my cheeks and such. Also, my dog is here, so if you hear some sniffing and there's a storm coming and she has storm anxiety, so she's gonna start freaking out here. But she asked if I wanted it to be put back in the microwave and I told her it was her turn, that's the rules, that she had to hide it. A day goes by or whatever, and my mom comes over because we were cleaning up the garage, or just cleaning things up. She had to go pee, and then, what do we see? I'll put the video here. They had put it in the toilet, which was so scary, and my mom screamed at the top of her lungs, and I wish I caught it on camera because it was actually the funniest thing. It was a big highlight of my week, that's for sure. Now it's time for blush, and I'm just going to be using the Warm Honey from Cover FX, one of my favorite for like a sun-kissed look. I'm just gonna first go in with the matte side. And this complements that Tower 28 bronzer really, really well. So here's the complexion all together. I really, really enjoy this whole combination. Everything just looks very, very glowy. I'm a big fan of that, and I love that powder, how it doesn't disrupt that glow. I've set pretty much everywhere on my face, and it looks still very glowy. I'm really falling in love with this Hourglass Veil powder. But now before I get into the eyes, I'm going to prime my eyes, do my eyebrows, and I will be right back. So please enjoy the brow intermission. Okay, brows and eyes are prepped. So I'm using the Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette today, and I forgot that there isn't really a brown toned uh, transition shade in here. There's this one that's really lovely, but it's more of a peach tone, and I just wanna keep it very monochromatic. So I did pull out this transition shade from Pat McGrath. You can use, this is a very un unique shade. It's in a lot of other palettes. This is just a single that I have. This is the shade Statue-esque but it's just a really nice, neutral, kind of more warm toned, leaning, transitional shade that I do really like to use time to time. This look is not gonna be like the most unique look, that's for sure. Uh, I have not been feeling very inspired with eye makeup, but I'm going to be changing that. Something exciting that I received this week was the e.l.f. and J. Kissa collab, and it is a beautiful rainbow palette. I really love the way that this one looks. This is my favorite rainbow palette to have ever existed, just by looks. I like how it's very well organized. And I like how there's deeper shades of the one so you can create more dimensional looks. I think it's really interesting. And I'll create some really fun looks with that. 
But today I just wanted to do something that made me feel really pretty. And I know my looks have been kind of maybe getting a little repetitive and I'm sorry about that. But I will change that for sure. I've just been really interested in base products and complexion products, I think, that I kind of step back from doing really unique eyeshadow looks. But I'm gonna change that for you guys because I know it can be repetitive and kind of boring, but I don't want my channel to ever get like that. So I'm just blending this out into the crease with the Smith 232. And now I'm just gonna deepen it up with the A25 from Anastasia. I'm trying to decide if I wanna go like this deep with the smoky eye or just make it a little softer. And I kind of feel like I wanna go deeper. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. But I'm now gonna take the shade Rust right here with the A25 brush uh, and just kind of start incorporating this into the crease. Really love the warmth of this tone. It's really, really nice. Actually, I think I wanna just use that shade all on the lid. Uh, I'm just gonna take this Royal Langnickel SM eyeshader brush and press it into the mobile lid just so we get the most pigmentation. And then I'll start blending the edges. I'm now going to take a smaller brush. This is a Royal Langnickel smudger brush. And I'm gonna take that shade Mar, which is the second deepest matte right here, the one I was originally going to use. And I'm just going to start kind of deepening out the outer portion. And I'm going to take the rest shade again with that same brush and just finish off the lower portion. I'm now going to return to my first brush I went in with with a little bit of that Pat McGrath shade just to smoothen out everything here because there is a little harshness around the edges so I want to get rid of that so I'm going to lightly lightly go over the edges of everything kind of soften them out and I'm not applying any pressure I'm letting those top bristles kind of do the work for me so I don't disrupt too too much and that's it for that I'm now going to take my eyeliner from Maybelline and I'm going to line the waterline I'm going to deepen up the eye even more with just a touch of the shade Rot 2, just on the outermost corners. I will be right back with this eye complete. So here are the eyes with just eyeshadow. It turned out a lot more blown out than I was originally going for, but I'm not mad at it. I think I would have just kind of taken it down a little bit on the edges. I wanted it to just be kind of like an everyday kind of smokier eye, but now it's a very vampy smoky eye, but whatever. I'm now going to apply some mascara, and I have been really loving this Marc Jacobs one. I really like it because of the brush. It's really nice to get into all of the lashes, and the formulation is nice because it coats them very nicely and it adds a lot of volume and length. So now I'm just gonna apply some Glossier Lash Slick as my bottom lash mascara. If you know, you know. This is the best bottom lash mascara in the world. I decided I'm not a huge fan of how over blended this is, so I'm gonna show you what I kind of do to help that situation. I take a clean brush and then I'll take my powder that I use or sometimes you can even use a shadow from the palette, like I could use Classic in here, although it might alter it too much because it is quite pigmented. If you go in with a slight amount of powder, and then you'll just take it on the edge and it kind of helps it to become a lot more soft and not as harsh and intense. Kind of brightens it a little bit. I might go in a, with a little bit of classic just to show you and I'm dusting it in this area here because I feel like it's closing up my eye a little bit and this will really help to blend the edges out even further and just make everything look a lot more concise okay I'm much happier with that what a difference it's very subtle but it still did something you know so eyes are done it's time for lips and then we're finished so I did pick out two colors the nude sticks Bahama Mama Flush paint or the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud and Morning Mocha and here they are together I think I'm gonna go with Morning Mocha though because it is more bronzy whereas this one has a little bit more pink in here and I just want true bronze so I'm just gonna line my lips with the MAC Oak pencil 
quickly. I need to sharpen it. My favorite uh, lip liner and eyeliner sharpener is the Glossier Play one, actually. It reminds me of elementary school. It's so funny, but it's the best. It's so good. I'm just adding a tiny amount of that lipstick. And I just blur it out with my finger, just so that we get kind of just a hint of that shade without it being too, too much. Here is the final look. I really love how it turned out. I love the matte features, the matte eyes with the matte lips, but the super glowy skin. Really, really love how this turned out. I think I went a little crazy with the blending of the eyes. I was really excited to play with these brown colors. If I were to change anything, I would have kept the under eye blend a lot closer to my actual lash line. Um, this turned out way too smoky for what I was going for today, but I still love it nonetheless. To make it a little bit more everyday appropriate, I would have kept it a little closer to the lash line. I love doing these types of looks because I feel like it really brings out the color in my eyes. And if you want to make your eyes pop even more, you can add a softer brown to the waterline and it really makes your eyes pop because sometimes black can make your eyes look a little bit smaller, but this just makes the eyes look humongous in my opinion. That is all from me today you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this Shop My Stash. I am really excited to play with some color this week. I'm going to be pulling out this palette. So let me know what kind of color story you want to see from this. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye!